Professor Nandini is from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering in AI ML Cybersecurity. This we have with us Dr. Tapakumar, who has over 10 years of experience in computer and network security industry. Nanti Development, Information Security and Ethical, CH, Ali, Hindu, Red Hat, LPC, PHP, JavaScript. Mr. Tapan has delivered more than 300 plus workshops. Online training on security, web application security, network security, etc. Besides this, he holds various certifications in the area of information security. He received second rank by Silicon Magazine in 2019 for best cyber forensic solution provider in India. Mr. Tapan is currently working for Oppo Mobiles, 34 Dubai, Up Group UAE, MAF Dubai, but also working for more than 15 plus companies as a, France, as a freelancer senior penetration tester and blue team leader. Thank you your time, sir. And over the session to you, and uh, sir? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. The session, sir. Sure. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for this nice introduction. And uh, first of all, good evening, everyone. I want every student to please type uh, in the chat box. Good evening, everyone. Great. So, uh, like before starting the session, there are some few things that we that I need to tell you that it will be a two way communication. Okay. Like I want my seminar will be a two way communication because within this one hour, I'm going to cover the important topic of, uh, you know, cybersecurity industry that is bug hunting and like uh, the main important, you know, concept about uh, OWASP top 10, the latest OWASP top 10. So we will, we will talk about that. We will discuss about each and every vulnerability and I will also perform some of the practical so that you will understand like uh, how the ethical hackers are finding bugs in the website based on the standard. So I request each one of you to participate in this workshop properly. And, uh, you know, uh, like if you will find any issue with the, any topic, please let me know in the chat box so that, uh, no, so that I will, I will repeat that topic again. Okay. Whenever you will find any issues, you just type in the chat box and I will provide you all the solutions. Okay. So guys, can we start our workshop? Please type yes or no in the chat box. Students, please. Okay. Not the faculties. Yeah. I want that uh, all, all of you students, all of you are uh, like should engage in this session so that it will be a more interactive session and you will definitely learn something from it. I, I keep on speaking and I will like, I will complete by one hour and then I will leave the leave, leave from the session and we will not get anything. So I want that if you will engage in this workshop and if you will learn it, and if you will actually ask your questions related to any doubt, so it will be a, you know, it will be a good chance for me to, you know, explore, uh, to, you know, share my knowledge with you. Okay, great. So guys, I'm just sharing my screen. Now, can I share my screen? So are you able to see my screen guys? The chat box, you have an option to type yes or no. Great, thanks. So uh, this workshop is basically for the OAS top 10 as well as a bug, bug hunting because many people like many students, those who are coming into the cybersecurity, they are they are always uh, thinking that after going into the cybersecurity, which particular area they, they need to go because cybersecurity is a big domain. So you have to define your area before entering into the cybersecurity. Either you need to go in a network security, web security, mobile app security, multiple fields are there. So you have to define your uh, area that I need to go in this particular area, um, in this particular field. After defining your field, you have to select your, you know, standards also because for each and every uh, field, we have different, different standards. So OAS is a big name in cybersecurity world because OAS provides a standards based on the, you know, vulnerabilities 
that it founds uh, in the market and based on the research, it provides a list of a top 10 vulnerabilities that is existing in the market. And based on this standard only, the pen testers, you know, the auditors keeps doing the audits for the application, for the, uh, web, uh, for the mobile application, for, uh, you know, for mobile app, for API, for website. So different, different type of audit can be done by referring the, you know, OWASP top 10 uh, standard. Even the softwares are also following the same standard. If you are, if you are running any professional software, it may be the Burp Suit, NetSparker, and any other alternatives. So they all are following the same standard that is followed by the OWASP top 10. And based on the vulnerability that they found in the application, they categorize each of them based on the OWASP top 10. So it means OWASP is a big name. So if you are entering into the bug hunting, you should know about each and every category of OWASP top 10. And OWASP top 10, like OWASP keeps on updating their categories. So the latest category we will talk about is OWASP top 10. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what is OWASP. So OWASP is a open web application security project. So it starts with the web application, but slowly, slowly developed multiple other standards also. So right now we are uh, like when we do our security testing for a mobile uh, web application, we are following the OWASP top 10 guideline. Even for the mobile application, even for the API also, we are following the OWASP guideline. So it is very much important to learn about this. And, you know, like when you are, you know, reporting any vulnerability to any company, so you should know that this particular vulnerability belongs to which category. And if you, if you, if you fail to identify that vulnerability that it belongs to which category, the application, the website do not accept your vulnerability. So it is one of the most important, like one of the most common mistake that uh, that is uh, you know done by any of the student or bug hunt, uh, bug uh, hunter. So what they will do, they will find a bug and they will not see that it belongs to which category and directly they will report to that application. They will say that it's a wrong, it's a it's a uh, it's a false, uh, it comes under the false category. The, after that, they will shift this particular vulnerability to another category, but it takes some time. Time. So instead of doing this, first of all, you should understand about each and every vulnerability. What type of a vulnerability can exist in which category and how you can find that vulnerability. If you understand this one, so it is uh, it is much uh, it is easier for you to you know start finding a bug in the application. Even uh, in the very introduction with, with with a very small introduction, I will also let you know how to find a bug and how I am finding a bugs for the company. So basically, I work with multiple companies. The companies hire me to hack their system, especially to hack their system not to secure it because like my uh, my work is to penetrate into the application web, web application apis to find out if uh, there is something some information is there that is that can be accessed by any outside or any malicious intruder so it, it is one of the most important job for the uh, for the companies especially because when they develop any software so they need to understand what vulnerabilities are there inside the application now vulnerabilities not only exist on the you know logic part but also it exist on the code part the source code review um, will be done on the app, on the application so that they can make sure whatever code that they have developed it uh, it must be the uh, you know uh, it must be the updated code that they are developing it's uh, it not uh, they are not using an older version of a you know, older version of that platform or they are not using on any you know older functions so these things must be uh, you know checked carefully while performing these type of a security audit so was is a big name in, uh, in cyber security and look like following the OWASP top 10 guideline, like when you are going for uh, interviews also, then they will ask you which guideline, which method, which uh, standard do you follow when you test any application? So you can say uh, we are following OWASP top 10. So it's a common standard for each one of them. Then after that here, you can see like there is a big vast difference between uh, 13 and 21. And there is another one, tw uh, uh, 21 is also there. So like previously there was a, a little bit shift like from 13 to uh, 17. Now, uh, in, in the updated one, 21, there is another very much big shift in the uh, in the vulnerabilities, but only a few, uh, two or three new vulnerabilities introduced in the OWASP top 10, 21, but maximum uh, maximum of them are seen. Now, you know, OWASP is working like not uh, only uh, like by securing the application, it will not work. You have to secure the platform also. You have to, you have to go for the post forensic part also. So it is very much important just because we have seen that uh, the company's data data got hacked. There is there will be security breaches happening in the company. So they need to make sure that from where this particular issue arises. So in order to find out the issues, they have to go for a post forensic, and it can be available only when you have a logging feature on your server. If somebody is trying to hack your system. So at that time, your servers keep recording all those footprints, all those you know attempts, and if it is available on your log server then only after doing a post forensic you find out that okay attacker tries to 
you know implement these type of attack on our application tries to insert these type of payload on our server and after that it successfully uploaded on our server so like uh, was is trying to cover in each each one of them like e each areas which actually impact the security of the application so initially we will start with the first one this is a basic one that's the injection so now like people like when we generally say it's a was top 10 so people think that okay it's a only a 10 vulnerabilities no guys it's not only 10 vulnerabilities it's a set of vulnerabilities that is categorized into 10 parts. So it means in one part, definitely multiple other vulnerabilities are in, uh, you know, uh, inside this one vulnerability. I'm just taking one example, like injection. It's a small injection. Everybody know about SQL injection. Okay. So like other injections are also inside this particular vulnerability only. HTML injection, it comes under this vulnerability. Command injection, that also comes under this vulnerability. So there are multiple type of injection that comes under this category so injection is basically like when you are trying to inject any information okay so uh, uh, before starting before starting the you know vulnerabilities part so i just wanted to understand like if you have if you guys have any background about this particular type of a vulnerability if you have any background please type yes if you do not have any background about do not know about these vulnerabilities please type no in the chat box so that uh, so that from the, there only i will be able to start yes from one student i received one answer yes he said yes. What about others, guys? Do it fast, guys. And in the end of the workshop, uh, in the end, in the end of the seminar, I will also uh, let you know my experience with the you know bug hunting part. Even I got one project in. Uh, I think you, most of you know about the Burj Khalifa. So like uh, I uh, so how I uh, I get this project because being an Indian, they they never uh, give this contract to any Indian person who is who, who is living inside the uh, in India. If they have an existence in the Dubai, then only they will give you the project. Otherwise, they, they will not give you. So hi, uh, how like uh, how I was me, uh, able to grab that opportunity, you know, by explaining my knowledge to them. So I will also share my this small story. It's a two or three minute story so that you understand, like when you are going into the market, when you are, you know, uh, reaching to the end technical person. So what all things are there that you need to make sure that uh, through that you can you can get some kind of opportunity you can generate some opportunity so i have generated opportunity to get that contract and right now i'm working for the you know uh imar imar is a king of uh, dubai so i'm working for them so like how i am able to grab that opportunity i will share that experience also so i might be possible it will be very much helpful for you in the upcoming years when you are going uh, when you are going for applying jobs or maybe you are going for a taking projects Okay, so some of them are having some knowledge. Yeah, guys, please uh, type in the chat box so that it will be clear for me also so that I understand that you have the, some basic knowledge or not. If you have basic knowledge, then we will directly take from the next level. If other, if you do not have, then we will go with the basic part. So some of them are having good knowledge. Some of, some of them are having the knowledge. Only one, two, three, four, five. Five response I have received. Out of 40 students, I have received only five students, uh, five candidates. So we have around 40 participants here in the, so there are the list of participants. I can see it. So please guys uh, type yes or no, only yes or no. You don't you do not need to type any paragraph here, but just type yes or no. So that I understand that you have some basic knowledge about this particular bug, bug hunting or vulnerabilities or not. Perfect. Great. So basically code, in, code injection actually occur when uh, there will be an application. I will just give a demonstration so that you understand more clearly. So let's suppose. Okay. Let me share my screen again. Yeah. Are you able to see my screen? Please type yes or no in the chat box. Yes, 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 I will take your uh, all your questions. No, no issues. One, the, one of my friend asked me one question: how how to get a blue hacker certificate? I will uh, answer all your questions in the end of the seminar. Okay. So here you can see, like it's a small website, a dummy website that you can also use for you know bug hunting purpose. Just to check the vulnerability, not uh, not uh, the actually bug hunting because it takes longer time to find out a bug. So within one hour, I'm not able to demonstrate the real time bugs, but uh, at this time, uh, basically I will let you know about uh, like how these dummy sites can be used to understand the bugs. So I will just, I'm just sharing this link of this website. It's a small website, demo.tesper.net. It is developed by the IBM students. Okay, so like uh, here you can see, uh, 
the sign in sign in uh, sign in is there so uh, there is a user and a password so from here also you can put some uh, parameter so uh, injection means like entering uh, entering those information uh, which which can harm the application like let's suppose here the application intended to accept the user and a password from the Uh, guys, just wait for a while. Sir will be joined. Sir, we just lost the connections. Yeah, am I visible now? Okay, great. So, like here, when the attacker is trying to enter some malicious payload, so I'm just taking example of a explanation, a basic example, so that you understand the logic. Because like a student ne never understand the logics and they keeps uh, entering the you know payloads, but they never understand what happening, what is happening in the application. When when we will go with the like after reporting a vulnerability, when we will go with the discussion part of the vulnerability, and, uh, and now, like after reporting the vulnerability, you have to explain uh, this to the developer also, like how they will patch this vulnerability. At that time, if you do not understand the concept, then definitely you won't be able to help them to resolve this issue. So that's another challenge. So that's why with the basic example, understand the concept, how these how this attack is working. And based on that only, you have to develop your concept and uh, further other attacks can be you know, created. By Year one equal to one. It's a basic, you know. You have seen multiple times. Many, uh, many of the students, many of the practical actors are, you know, trying to show you this, this practical. But the basic understanding behind this particular practical is, uh, right now here we need to enter the username. But uh, we are entering the SQL injection payload. So payload can be anything. Like right now I'm uh, putting one statement one uh, or one equal to one. So it's a true statement. But attacker can implement anything, whatever they will feel. Okay. So it's a kind of a payload that we are putting. So it's a payload. So when we are entering this username and a password as a payload. Uh, as a explanation payload when we click login button so here you can see we are able to access the admin user account so it means it's a kind of a uh, it's a kind of an injection where attacker is uh, you know entering the malicious malicious payload inside the website and website is able to process that payload and after that uh, if, uh, if, uh, if it will be a injection then they will bypass the info uh, they will bypass the authentication and directly access your account so it means when the web application is allow attackers to uh, enter any malicious, uh, you know, payloads, then this type of a vulnerability can exist. Now you have to, now you understand that. Uh, so the form validation is in plays in very much important part. If attacker is not able to implement one apostrophe or one equal to one, so then definitely uh, attacker is not able to bypass this uh, authentication. So a form validation must be there. So in order to understand the attack, you need to understand how this attack is happening and how we can prevent this type of attack. So a client side validation as well as server -side validation, validation, both must be implemented and whatever data that is entered by the attacker should be, uh, you know, first of all, encoded so that it cannot be processed in form of a actual query or command. So automatically this type of vulnerability eliminates from the, from this particular website. So this is the this is the way of a uh, injection. So now injection can be of multiple uh, multiple type. It's a normal SQL injection vulnerability. Uh, other than this, we have a command injection also. You know the process is same, but the main thing is that the payload can uh, will be changed. For SQL injection, we have another payload. For the you know for command injection, we have another payload. But the process remains same. The parameter remains same. So always attacker looks for the parameter. How many input fields are there? So. Uh, like hacking a static website is more difficult than hacking a Facebook account. I'm saying this thing because on a static page, you cannot do anything. You cannot do any experiment because there is no input uh, that is entered by the, you know, that is, that is entered by the user side. 
so when you are not you are not supposed to enter anything if there will be no numeric things that is uh, there is no parameter that is accepted by the user part then you cannot make any changes in uh, inside the website but on facebook we have a lot of parameter so there is a possibility that uh, the, like facebook is uh, developing their feature on a daily basis okay so if they are developing their feature on daily basis then there might be possibility that the facebook developers may you know uh, you know leave any vulnerability and attacker may be able to find out that and through that they are able to access the account like previously uh, it was done on the like there was a one bug on uh, the facebook uh, through that they are able to brute force the you know o otp so this bug was left by the developer itself because they have not set the validation how many times of a otp can be you know tried by the user so if they set the number of uh, attempts so definitely this vulnerability uh, was resolved by the uh, facebook but after after you know finding after getting the bug uh, bug they pass this vulnerability and now the number of limit is set on their otp so it means like if the application is developing on a daily basis so there is a chances that the attack uh, the attacker can you know inject some malicious input and can tries to hack the website so this is a basic example of a injection and through source code review also you can find out that your application you know form validations are properly or not you know input whatever you are entering so your form should restrict the user to enter only those information which is allowed to enter inside the application they should not allow any content should be uh, like any content should not be accepted on the website the another one is a broken authentication it's a common type of a vulnerability that supports like a, if you are having a common password weak password even if you are trying to put a brute force on any website so then this type of a vulnerability come into existence i am just giving you one small example by using a burp suit remember guys if you want to make your career in cyber security burp suit uh, work like a you know uh, magic for you in the uh, in the cyber security industry because Uh, this is the professional tool that we are also using in multinational company so if you are majorly focus on you know give, uh, you know being trained on a burp suit tool so definitely you will uh, you will be able to find out the bugs by using this tool we um, with the alternative of a burp suit we have a zap proxy and net spark or connectix but the best one is a burp suit just because uh, first of all the cost of this particular burp suit tool is little bit less as compared to other tools and Company do not prefer to have a automated. Uh, do not uh, do not prefer to use a automated tool because those automated tools generate a lot of false positive. Like when you go to the doctor, let, let's suppose uh, if you have a fever, so at at home only you will not test. You will not you know start treating yourself by you know uh, just googling uh, just by typing some you know, information from the Google and seeing what kind of a uh, you know medicine that you can take. you personally visit to the doctor and get the consultancy from them like what needs to be done just because you know that this is a guy he have good knowledge and uh, with his experience only he will suggest me the medicines and based on the experience that uh, that that he or she is having uh, based on the pre uh, previous patient uh, patients so based on that only he will he will suggest me something so that's why manual testing is one of the most important testing that the industry is ac accepting and if you are you know taking this burp suit with you then definitely it will be a boom in the market and you will definitely get a good job so how to how to use a broken authentication one how to how to make use of a broken authentication vulnerability i will just tell you so uh, like a burp suit we have two version one is a community edition another one is a professional edition so you are a student you don't need to go for a professional edition if you are going for a manual testing you can work on a community edition so if you want to download that burp suit so what you can do you can just type download burp suit and i think most of you are already having this but but then also i am telling you so here you can see without uh, giving the email id also you can download this particular version i'm just sharing this link in the chat box so that it will be e easier for you to you know download this too like after download the downloading in this community edition so community edition comes with some limitation like you cannot do automated scan but most of the things are open in it so if you are a manual tester so you can do your work properly sometime i uh, sometime might be possible i am not on my system i am um, might be possible i am remote uh, i am doing my work from some other place so at that time if i do not have a license then also i can use a burp community edition and i perform my auditing so here you can see just start this software normally and it's a proxy software so proxy software means let's suppose between you and me nandini ma'am is there okay so like whenever i am telling all the information so it reaches to the nandini ma'am and nandini ma'am will narrate this information or you know uh, forward this information to all the students 
so she acts like a proxy so when i'm transferring any information to the students first of all it will reach to the nandini ma'am and then only it will reach to the student getting a point so it means nandini ma'am will see each and everything so if i'm sharing my username and a password to the students then who will uh, the who will be the first person who will see this uh, username and password nandini ma'am oh, got it so it so basically if you are if you are uh, directly communicating with the any any server like if you are directly requesting for any website facebook google whatever it is so when uh, when you open a browser type google.com it reaches on a google server and get the information from the google and it display on your browser but what happen in between of it so if you want to you know do some bug bounty so definitely you have to see what is happening in between the client and the server so based on the information that is transferring between the client and the server you are able to understand what are the ways to, uh, what are the parameter that you can change and get the information let's suppose i'm just giving you a small example so that you understand it more clearly so let's suppose there is an web application okay it's your, it's um, maybe it's a jan university college application okay where th there is a option to request for your profile okay so uh, there is a list of the student or there is a list of our faculties there we have to select your uh, uh, your name and after that it will fetch the information from the database getting a point i think this much is clear so what i what i did i just uh, clicked on a drop down button and i click on a nandini ma'am okay so when i click on a nandini ma'am so automatically it uh, it send this information that the name is nandini and uh, you know the para, uh, the parameter maybe she is having an id of 10 so it reaches on a database and uh, through the database it dis it fetch the information and display it in your browser so a nandini ma'am complete information will be displayed on my browser okay so uh, like when any user will come on that on that website so it will select the name and it will fetch the information it will see it on your browser what is happening in between of it nobody can see but when you use a proxy software so when you when you select this nan, uh, name uh, uh, like faculty name as a nandini so it reaches on a uh, uh, verb suit it's in the proxy software so there i can see okay it request for a id equals to 10 so it means uh, nandini ma'am information is available on id equals to 10 so what i can do i can make changes over there i can i can put 9 i can put 11 i can i can take uh, 12 13 14 whatever it is so i am able to fetch that user information also so sometime might be possible you are not allowed to access uh, information uh, for the uh, 13 but by changing the parameter if you are able to fetch that information so that proxy is very much useful so many pen tester uses a verb suit professional or verb suit tool to capture this information and there only they will find multiple bugs okay i'm just giving you an example of a broken authentication so that, so that you understand it more clearly so here you can see on the top of it you will find a third tab that is a proxy one on the proxy there is an sub tab in the fourth option you will find a option tab okay in the below you will find 127.0.0.1 port number 800 so this is the uh, this is the ip address a local host ip address 127.0.0.1 and port number 800 that on which your software is listening so what do you need to do now you have to set this proxy with the ip with the port number on your browser so whatever browser you are using i am telling you to use a firefox just because it is much more convenient for doing this type of a task okay in the settings you when you go just type proxy and enter uh, enter anything here you can see uh, manual proxies configuration just type the ip address and the port number got it click on a okay then after this let's suppose click on a sign off so here you can see when i clicked there sign off so automatically this request comes here in the verb suit and verb suit appears on my screen suddenly so it means boss i got your information whatever you are you are you wanted to process it from the browser so it reaches here so when you click on an intercept so intercept means like whatever request that is coming on uh, uh, that is uh, that you have uh, clicked on the browser it reaches on a proxy software proxy software say what do you want to do you want to drop this information or you want to forward this information to the server so now based on your intelligence like we need to forward it right now we do not need to make any changes into it click on forward and here you can see there is an option intercept is on so till the time you put this intercept is on so it keeps the uh, you know uh, you know capturing it keeps the uh, you know uh, holding all the request that is you know generating from your browser so right now i am not in the mood of you know capturing any information now what i will do i will just go on a sign in button okay now here i will type anything let's suppose admin and in the password i can type you know uh, yes okay 
yes one two three. So I, I just type uh, the password and uh, the username is admin. I do not know about the password, but I, right now I'm planning to to perform a brute force on this particular password field. Now what what we need to do before clicking on sign in button, I will just come here, click on intercept on because here we need to intercept the request, whatever uh, username password that that we are sending to the server. We need to capture this request from browser to the proxy software. And there only we need to perform a brute force. We need to add a list so that we can brute force this password and whatever will be the right combination, we are able to get it. So what we need to do now, click on this sign login button. So when we click on sign in button, so here you can see it will start blanking because we got your request. So here you can see UID is a admin and password is a yes123, but we do not know the password. So what we need to do now send this request in the intruder. Okay, so this is the same process for you know uh, cracking the OTP also. So now in intruder part here you can see it selects multiple field, uh, multiple parameters because uh, like it's an automated software, so it selects multiple parameters. You do not need to mess with this. So just click on a clear button. Just need to clear all the selected parameter. Now here there is an option. Uh, just select the parameter uh, parameter value. So on uh, basically a password field, you need to put a brute force. So just select this yes one two three and click on add button as soon as you will click on add button automatically it captures now click on this payload what payload you need to set so right now we are, uh, we, are we need to add one list of a password so from the internet you can download this list so let's suppose root linux password sindhu smith nandini Yes, tapan, then pass to admin Linux one two three hacker hack the four five something like that. A list we have created now. Click on the start attack so it say it shows that it's a community edition, it will not run with the full privilege, but yeah, it will run. So here you can see a multiple combination is they are trying. So username is default admin and it is trying for a password. So multiple combination it is trying. So here you can see for each and every status. So you can just see the status and the length. If you will find any changes in the status and the length, so it means that combination actually matches. So very first when it when we type when we added this admin as a username here in the below you can see UID as an admin and password is equals to root. So it means it says by it's not login. Okay. It shows it's found, but no session is generated. It means the password is wrong. Then with same with the other also. So just drop down, drop down and see where you find the changes. So are you able to find any changes in the length part? On which parameter you will find the changes in the length part? Please type in the chat box. Where you will uh, on which value you find changes in the length. Okay, great. Then I'm very good. What about others? Guys, fast, fast. It should be a two-way communication. It should not be a one-way communication. Okay, great, great, great. Fast, 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 guys. I want each one of you to answer this, uh, answer this question. It's a small, it's a small answer. It's an easy one. Very good. Great. We got a good response. Okay. So on admin part, you can see the response on the length of uh, in the length we uh, we uh, received a uh, higher length. So here you can see uh, cookies is set here because when it tries admin as a username and admin as a password, when it reaches on a server, server identify that this is a correct combination. So for the correct combination, always server generates some session ID, and in the response, it we received a session ID. So automatically, the length of the you know response increased. So we received two seventy six length. Got it. So in this way, if it is happening on your website, so it means you can you know, discard. Okay. So this this vulnerability comes under broken authentication. So basically, we need to set number of limits on the uh, number of uh, number of attempts on the login form these things can be possible on the forms also where you have an inquiry form on your website and attackers can fill multiple fake inquiries on your website so
So these attacks can come under broken authentication. Then after that, we have another sensitive data exposure. So sensitive data exposure, it's another good vulnerability. Uh, it means like uh, accessing those information which is not allowed to access. Let's suppose uh, right now, uh, Nandini Mama and me are having uh, access to the information. Let's suppose on my PPT. Like previously, she know what I'm teaching uh, on this particular uh, one hour session. Okay. But students do not have this authority to see what I'm going to teach in this one hour session. Dear point. So like uh, ma'am's uh, privilege is different and student privilege is different. So both the, uh, uh, and for both the users, uh, you know, they have different, different rights uh, on, on me. So basically, uh, sensitive data, data exposure, it means when your application, your servers al allows anyone to access those information, which, which, uh, which is not allowed to access by anyone. So it means that, uh, that, uh, vulnerability comes un under sensitive data exposure. I'm just giving you one small example so that you understand it more clearly. Let's suppose uh, there's an application. Okay. Exploit hyphen DB. Dot com. So let's suppose I'm just giving an example so that you understand it more clearly. So uh, let's suppose there's an application on a Facebook. Let, let's suppose take an example of a Facebook. When you are trying to create your account, so they will ask you the name, mobile number, email ID, your password, and your KYC document. Okay. So you need to upload that KYC document. So what you will do, you will just uh, put your KYC document over there, you know, Aadhaar card, and you will upload it on the website. So when the, when the website will accept your KYC details, it will store somewhere in the server itself. Okay. Maybe in the upload folders or maybe anywhere. So when they are, uh, you know, uploading these information on their server. So application administrator or application developer do not want that any other user who is not an admin admin of that website can be able to see your information. So it, they do not allow any, anybody to, uh, like they, uh, they will be able to see your, uh, this uploaded information for that, what they will do, they will put some file permission on their uh, server. So might be possible your server, you fail to, you know, configure a server and your, uh, you know, file permission got changed and anybody with having the right link are able to access directly inside your server. It's just like, if I know your IP address and if I know how many drives you are having and what is the path, path of your uh, images file. So I will just put that uh, URL in my browser and I'm able to access directly inside your uh, system and I'm able to see the images that comes under this category also. Sensitive data exposure, or you can also say this as an improper access control. It means you are not uh, like uh, the access control are not properly configured on the, the server. So on the, there is a part GSDP, Google Hacking Database. So I will just copy this website in the chat box. Okay, great. Now let's suppose uh, when you type GSDP, so on the top of it, you will find an option for a filter. So here we will just select sensitive directories, the third one. So after that, it will show you some of the Google Docs that include some important information. So here you can see uh, index of, are you able to see this one, the third, of, third one? Third one is the index of or backup or backup.xml. So when I click on it, it will take some time to open. Okay. There are many other fold folders also. So private lock, just open this one also. Okay. So here you can see, uh, it shows that, uh, uh, like these are, these are Google docs. That is basically used to find out uh, information on the Google with more relevant results. Okay, so here you, uh, here you can see in title. In title is a Google operator. Okay, that defines that uh, in the title of the uh, application you will find an index of backup.xml. So when you click on it, it automatically opens some of the pages on the website uh, on the Google. Okay, it do not contain maximum number of results. Just remove this one. Now go down, get some other in, uh, get some other Google Doc. Sorry, issue with this system. Invoices, file admin. Just take multiple example. 
private locks so here you can see so now there's an uh, like by clicking on one of the doc we're able to find out that this ip address 206.65.210.6 so when we click on it so this is the internal directories of this particular server okay are you able to see this one this is the internal directory so it means we directly enter inside the server and we do not require any username and password so this uh, this particular vulnerability comes under improper access control because we are able to see we are able to access those information which is not allowed to access by anyone so when you remove this one folder so all these are the folders that is available on their server so i am able to access this server so this is this is also a sensitive information that is uh, uh, revealed by this particular website even in the xml part also because now these these applications are using a uh, xml documents to upload their information so if uh, attacker is able to make some changes in the document file of xml and trying to upload some malicious file and if the application accept that file then this come you know, this uh, xml uh, this particular vulnerability comes under xml external entity so through this also you can also you know imp implement cross site scripting in broken access control broken access control it means like when the user privileges are not set let's suppose if there is a website and uh, there, uh, there we have two roles one is an admin role another one is a user role okay getting a point a website contains two user role one is a admin role which maintain the entire website another one is a user role. there are multiple user on the website so if i have created one account on that particular website if i enter my information and i uh, re registered inside uh, registered on the website after that i entered in, uh, into my account and might be possible by changing some parameter maybe in the cookies or maybe in the url i'm able to access the other user account it means like uh, i have already logged into my account but after making some changes in the session id or in the url where there will be a uh, there will be a parameter that is passing like id equals to 10 so if you are requesting for 11 user uh, 11 id so it means 11 uh, id belongs to some other user and if you are able to access his account which is having the same privilege level that comes under broken uh, broken access control so if you are able to access that account uh, it comes under horizontal uh, privilege escalation and might be possible if i have created a small user account on the website and and by making some changes in the cookies where might be possible there is an option to uh, you know um, user type so it was a normal user or if you make changes if you make changes to the admin so by entering an admin uh, in the user type so automatically it allow you to access the admin rights also so that comes under vertical privilege es escalation so there are two type of privilege escalation one is a horizontal another is a uh, vertical so in broken access control it means like uh, attacker is able to you know access any other user account or maybe the admin account so that vulnerability comes under this particular vulnerability another one is a security misconfiguration like most of the time i have seen that the like uh, you know when you need to do anything in the company so they always see that uh, this person uh, hire this person and just google some of the information and try implementing or try to implement on the on their real time server so this is very much harmful because by, just by seeing the videos if the user are complete or like if the students are completing their, their courses where they cannot ask if but for nothing so in that condition if the students are learning so definitely what they will do when they are going for a job they will install their server with the default configuration celebrity and there will be a chance that the uh, that the hacker can uh, you know hack that system easily so it's not about the application but, but it's about the server the framework that they are using so if you are not you know configuring the server in a proper way then anybody any attacker can miss, can check if there will be a configuration error hap, uh, happen on the server so they tries to misuse that uh, issue i'm just giving a small example so that you understand it more clearly might be possible their default passwords are not changed they are using a default password or maybe uh, you know uh, no their configuration files are not changed their sample files are not changed i'm just taking one example also let's suppose right now we have opened some of the files so here in the directories in the below you will find a apache 2.4.39 in the below you can see this so it's a version that that is running on their particular server so apache is a server and it is running on 2.3 or 4. 
three eight. So what attacker will do? Attacker will Google this version with this uh, with the server to find out if any any issues, any vulnerabilities present on this server or not. And if it is available, so at attacker will what the attacker will do? Attacker will find out that uh, you know exploits and try to exp uh, try to run that exploit in against of this website. So this uh, this says that uh, you know this is this is called as a security misconfiguration because when we are hardening our server. So at that time, you have to make sure that the password must be strong. If the remote access is not allowed, then you should disable this unnecessary software, unnecessary services should not run on your server. You know, these type of default information, which may be very much helpful for the attacker yeah, or from the attacker point of view, you should remove those information so that an attacker never understand that which server is running, um, uh, running behind this application. So it is very much important to remove these information. Okay. Got it. So this vulnerability comes under security misconfiguration. Other than this, we have some other issues also, like uh, uh, the seventh number, the cross site scripting. It's a very, it's a very common vulnerability. Then you can found that you can found in any website and uh, most of the website especially. And for this, basically, people are getting paid around two hundred or five hundred or one thousand dollars also. So like in cross site scripting, what actually happened? I'm just giving you one example so that you understand it more clearly. So in cross site scripting, what happens? First of all, you need to find out a parameter, a two type of a parameter you need to find out. First parameter is where you are entering some information. It is reaching on the server side and it reflect back in your browser. Let's suppose, uh, I'm just giving, I'm just trying to give you one example. Let's suppose if I will say Nandini ma'am to ask uh, yes, um, to ask yes, what she will ask. <laughs> so to ask yes that uh, he is having pen or not. Okay. Then what Nandini Mem will do? Nandini Mem will uh, 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 like uh, speak in the uh, in the session uh, itself. Ask uh, yes. Do you have a pen or not? Okay. So now this response comes coming back to me that yes, yes is having pen or not. Got it. So let I'm narrating this to Nandini ma'am and Nandini ma'am is sending this information to the uh, yes. And again, ma'am is telling me that yes is having this uh, pen or not. Got it. So it means the, the information that I'm sending to the, uh, to the Nandini ma'am, like yes, yes is a word. Okay. So it, it reaches on a Nandini ma'am and from Nandini ma'am, it replied back to me on my, uh, like uh, on my panel. So like this only through the website also, you need to find those parameter where you are typing that parameter. It reaches on a server, reflect back in your browser. So if you are able to find out, let's suppose I'm just giving an example. In the search bar, you will find this parameter. In the search bar, when you type anything, let's suppose I'm just typing my name, Tapan Kumar Jha. Okay. When I type Tapan Kumar Jha, when I click on a go, it reaches on a server, checks if in the database, wait a second. Let me remove this proxy. It reaches on a server, it find out that Tapan Kumar Jha it is present in the database or not. If it is there, then display the result. If it is not, then also it reaches on my browser. So it says no results were found for the query Tapan Kumar Jha. So getting, getting a point. So it means here we are entering some information. It reaches on a server, it reflects back in a browser. So there is a possibility then cross-site scripting can be possible. Now, how it is possible? So we need to, uh, we need to enter a malicious script in the place of Tapan Kumar Jha. So I'm just uh, writing one small payload. So based on the experience, like uh, I'm just uh, telling you the basic scripts, but you can also create a, you know, some uh, advanced scripts, but you need to understand the logic in the application where you need to find out this vulnerability. And if you understand the logic, automatically you are able to use any, uh, any payload and you are able to find out the bug. Let's suppose it's a small script tax, closing and, and alert. I'm using an alert function and type access Jan University. Okay, so I just copy this script, click on go button. It reaches on a server, it reflects back in a browser. So my browser say, okay, it's a script, it's a Java script, and we are using an alert function. So automatically it, uh, it display one pop up on my screen. Getting a point. But if it will be a stored access, it's a reflected access. But if it will be a stored access, then it will store inside the database. 
So whenever any user is coming on this particular page, it will uh, like they will see this particular pop up. You have noticed that on many of the website, you will you, you will find an on uh, annoying pop ups. So it's it's just because attacker have inserted that pop up inside the website, and after that they can redirect that uh, website on another websites also. They can uh, display the ads also. So in this way, they need they uh, conduct this type of attack. So this come under cross site scripting. So not here, uh, uh, you know, was stops, but it reaches on the next level. Insecure deserialization, uh, deserialization uh, issues. So vulnerability. So this vulnerability was present in the Airtel app from the last, uh, like, uh, in the month of uh, around of February itself. Because recently we have tested uh, an uh, Airtel Thanks app. I think I think you have known about this. No, you have, you know about this Airtel Thanks app in the iOS version. So this is the vulnerability that are present in the Airtel Thanks app. And with that, what we are able to do by recharging, uh, like uh, th there is an option to recharge your mobile phone with some balance. So if I'm taking one rupees and if I'm changing the plan, like by decoding that information, so I'm able to avail the in uh, the services, which is which is having a cost of rupees 1000. So I did it two, three times to test it, to recharge my phone. Then after that, I found that this is a bug. And uh, like we have reported this to the Airtel, uh, Airtel also, just because we were doing a testing for the Airtel especially. So this was the bug, the latest bug that is present in the Airtel Thanks app. So we have reported that bug and they have uh, resolved this issue. So insecure deserialization uh, vulnerabilities occurs when you are trying to you know send any encoded information from the request. So like Burkswood is able to decode that information. I'm just telling you like there is an option decoder. Are you able to see this one top one? It's a decoder. The top of it. So let's suppose if I am trying to copy this script, if I want to encode like from here only, you can encode or you can decode the information. So let's suppose encode as HTML. So here you can see it is a HTML encoded form of the above script. So from here only, you can decode the information. So might be possible your application, due to the security point of view, they have uh, you know encoded their parameters. But if you are able to decode that information by putting it here in the verb suit, you are able to see what information is there inside the uh, inside uh, in, inside the request, and you are able to manipulate that information. After that, they are able to run the attack. So in this way, this attack happens on a Airtel thanks app. Then after that, on the ninth level, we have another vulnerability using component with known vulnerability. You have seen that there are many websites that is built on a WordPress. And WordPress is, you know, one of the harmful websites that I can say. Even our website is also built on a WordPress because it's the easier one. Anybody can, you know, create it just by drag and drop. No coding language is required. Only one month training, you will become a web developer. And students are very much happy. We are able to, we are able to develop a website. But remember one thing: you there, you need to use a multiple plugins. And for each and every plugin, the WordPress are not, you know, uh, owning that particular plugins. You are installing it from the third party. Might be possible third party is not giving in any update, and there will be there will be inbuilt vulnerability that, that uh, appears inside this uh, particular plugin. So attacker is able to hack your website by using that plugin vulnerability. So this vulnerability, this type of vulnerability comes comes under using component with known vulnerability, where you are able to compromise the application by by having their own known vulnerability. This is this is the E9 vulnerability because there are, there are many platforms that is developed now these days. Now, most of the uh, application help, uh, like most of the framework help uh, developers to, you know, directly develop the application without using any code. So if you are using this type of a, you know, platform, so you have to make sure that uh, that application, that pr framework must be running on a latest version. If you are using an older version, then there will be a chance that any hacker can hack their system. The last vulnerability comes under like insufficient login and monitoring. This all happens, like all securities you have implemented on the application, all input validations, server validation, you know, encoding, everything you have implemented, but you are not logging that information. You are not monitoring that uh, information that is stored on their, uh, on their log files. If you are not doing it, so you are making a mistake. Might be possible some is, someone is trying to hack your system. He's trying to do some, uh, you know, he's trying to uh, attempt uh, on your website and you are, you are not aware about it. So like by uh, seeing the logs only, you are able to see that thing that uh, somebody is trying to attack on my system or not. If he is trying to attack your system, then you can implement a web, uh, web application firewall. You can implement some, you can create some more rules based on the you know logs that you have received. So 
for the post forensic it is very much important even in the government guideline also in the india if you are if you are working in india and if you are, if you are working in any company which is which resides inside the india so certain cert, uh, certain uh, computer emergency response team it's a government organization have launched another uh, a new rule that you have to maintain the logs and whenever any cyber incident happening is happen within your within your company you have to give this report to the certain otherwise they will, uh, they will uh, they will you know give you a non compliant certificate and after that you won't be you won't be able to work within the india uh, within, uh, within this country so it's a it's a, a big you know article is released and big you know rule is released so after like 2 3 months it definitely going to be implemented in the industry so it's a very much important to log all the information all the you know errors all the attempts for this for the application for the server and to properly monitor those uh, those uh, logs so that you understand that if somebody is trying to hack our system or not if somebody tries to uh, you know or trying to some do some brute force into our application or not so these are the was top 10 method that you need to understand you need to you know learn so that you can go in the bug bounty now uh, in uh, in the in the top 10 vulnerability we have around 160 uh, like in the top 10 category we have around 160 uh, vulnerabilities so manually you can go through each one of the vulnerability and get some experience out of it but when you are going for a reporting any bug uh, any uh, any bugs on any website so remember one thing always prefer this was top 10 standard check this vulnerability belongs to which category and based on that you understand the you know solution of it you based on that you understand the impact of it and always see the you know the logic what logic says how these application uh, how these vulnerabilities are working payload doesn't matter you can have a basic payload you can have a advanced payload because in the companies you can not implement advanced payload advanced payload doesn't mean that uh, bypass method you cannot try you can try bypass method but you cannot use those scripts that can harm the application because you do testing on a real time basis because when we uh, like we are conducting audits so it's a live application we are conducting audits so might be possible if you are entering any script and might be possible there will be a website uh, like website uh, the client website got defaced so in that condition they they are not going to pay you anything even they are going to block you also for doing an audit so these things are happening in the market so always prefer to use a basic type of a script with a some bypass uh, you know payload so that you can understand each and everything more clearly any question with the was top 10 i will open house for the questions any questions with the above was top 10 any question guys no perfect any questions uh students if you have any doubts you can ask the questions Okay, I think so. I think so. Uh, no questions are there from the uh, student side. No issues. Okay. Uh, so is it done, sir? Yes, it is done. Okay, uh, students. I hope there are no questions. So finally, we are. end of the session so before i end up the session i would so like one to question is there so i'm sorry oh, about okay. that one question oh. is there i need some uh, I, i need some guide yes ask me one question okay sir recently i reported security issue on one one second on one on one bug bounty program from hacker one platform my report is also uh, is also be triggered and state as informative in my report and i uh, i also attach similar reference of my own friend and other hacker one reports where their their reports are successfully disclosed uh, disclosed and bounty offered but in my case they simply tagged, uh, tagged as informative and closed my report can you tell me how 
should i need to write the more attractive vulnerability report can i share my screen so that you understand okay um, first of all i will answer this one uh, ashim i'm just giving you the uh, you know pointers that you need to make sure that these information these type of uh, things should be covered so here you can see title description affected resources severity impact recommendation tools resources and poc proof of concept these things should be covered in your poc so that we can and uh, even you should more focus on a impact part because company always see like this one liberty is if it is impacting on our application so how till what extent it impacts on our application so based on that only they uh, they will see and uh, you know based on the vulnerability that you are telling them i think that uh, that in that vulnerability is not disclosing so much information or maybe if all uh, it's totally depend on the company how they are accepting it it's not depend on the you know bug crowd might be possible sometime uh, through the bug crowd if we, we are reporting any vulnerability to to the companies but they will not they will not accept it previously they were, they have accepted it and they have also given the bounty but uh, right now they are not accepting it so these issues definitely arises when you are going for a bug bounty so i i always recommend all our students that take uh, like spare some time on a bug bounty not the entire time because you keep hunting up bugs and definitely if the company is not replying if, if they are not giving you anything so it will you know uh, like um, it will down your moral also so that's why i never yes sir i have covered impact and poc okay so if you have covered a pos uh, impact and a poc then then uh, then i uh, it's a depend on the company especially sometime like when we are working with the uh, mnc so we also receive some of the uh, you know issues from the bug hunter sites through this hacker one and you know open bug bounty but uh, it's totally depend on the management like they want to respond it on that uh, uh, particular vulnerability or not if they they do not want to respond then they will not respond uh it doesn't matter if you have copied the entire impact the entire poc if you have copied and you have also uh, you know re, um, reproduce that particular vulnerability as a friend did but then also if you are not getting the response then it's totally depend on the company space can you just see and review it if, if it is possible so what you can do you can just send me that uh, you know uh, report on my email id So that I will just review it, and I will I will uh, give my feedback on that uh, particular report to you. Okay, I think this will be a good good solution for this. On this, you can share share your POC. Okay, how to get a blue a blue hacker certificate? So blue hacker certificate, like I have not seen blue hacker certificate because. red teaming certificate is there okay ethical hacker certificate is there but blue hacker certificate i have not i have never heard about it because company never want blue hacker certificate because multiple teams are there purple team is there you know red teaming is there um, you know uh, so certif from the certification point of view we have only red teaming certification and uh, you know certified ethical hacker so other than this i have not seen any other certification in the market got it initially you can go with the ceh and after that you can go with the oscp and then after that you can go with the pssp these three are the premium certification that uh, that is done by any security professional and uh, with that they, they are able to get a job easily in the uh, market how to get a red hat certificate so from uh, red hat certificate if you want to get uh, you want to get this red hat certificate so you have to go for a rhcsa or rsce so rhcsa from the red hat certified engineer you can, you need to do a linux course red hat linux course from that only you are able to get it got it any issues done fine any more question guys questions nothing is there i think thank you guys before we wind up i would like to thank department of computer science and engineering aiml and cyber security also future and technologists for organizing the industry connect sessions every saturday regularly we are definitely grateful to our resource person today the tapan kumar for being a part of our industry connect session thank to dr 
the head of the department the head of the department of computer science engineering in artificial intelligence and machine learning and cyber security and the team of our faculty members for all the support they offer happy weekend and good night everyone